so thank you everybody once again for joining us. Um, we're on to our second session of Zimbabwe. And uh, just to, last week we did a little bit of a brief introduction to Zimbabwe and I covered most of the main areas of uh, where there's um, uh, tourism in, in Zimbabwe. We looked at Victoria Falls, we looked at Wangi, Matusa, Donna and Kariba. We looked at Manipuls and then I took you down to the Eastern Highlands, to Gonorazu National Park. We looked at uh, the historical Great Zimbabwe Ruins and the Matopas National Park. So today um, I thought I'd focus a little bit more on the northwestern side of the country. This northwestern side um, is an easily combinable uh, itinerary option. Um, combining Victoria Falls, Wangi, Kariba and Mana Pools. Um, so we'll look at this today. I'm going to do it flying into Victoria Falls and flying out of Harare, but it can be done either which way around. And I guess maybe just to start with, um, I would say that this is optimally anything between nine and 12 nights as an itinerary. Uh, Ideally, three nights in each place, which would be a 12 night itinerary, but certainly um, if you've only got sort of nine or, or 10 nights, we could uh, probably do two nights Victoria Falls, three nights in Wangi, two nights in Kariba, and three nights in Mana Pools. Um, that would uh, bring you to a 10 night itinerary. Um, and, uh, and I'd say that that would be the optimal time in this area. So I'm going to start off uh, talking about Victoria Falls and we're going to um, just start off. I'm going to uh, talk to you about two properties in Victoria Falls today. Um, the one is Old Drift Lodge and the other one is uh, Victoria Falls Safari Lodge. Uh, these are both uh, sort of iconic properties in the area and I'm going to start off by just showing you a video um, of Old Drift Lodge. Sorry, there we go. like Old Drift Lodge. Um, Old Drift is situated about seven kilometers upstream from the Victoria Falls. It's situated right on the banks of the Zambezi River, as you can see in these, um, in these pictures and from the video, and within the uh, Zambezi National Park. Um, so this is, a, this is a really wonderful option because it's out of the bus, the hustle and bustle of the Victoria Falls, upstream, beautiful, beautifully peaceful and tranquil. And as you could see from the video, you really do have the animals walking down through the camp to the water to drink. Uh, Old Drift Lodge is, um, comprises seven luxury tents. 
Uh, these are really beautiful and spacious, and each of them um, has got a beautiful indoor-outdoor feel with a, a vast deck around each of the tents. Each of them has got a private plunge pool. Um, they've got beautiful lounges. And then here you can see in this bottom picture, each of them has got a um, copper slipper bath out on the deck with indoor and outdoor showers. Uh, beautiful big bathrooms. Here you can see the lovely wraparound deck and this indoor-outdoor feel of, um, of each of the tents. Um, one of the other reasons uh, that I like Old Drift Lodge is their rates are on a fully inclusive basis. So when staying there, their rates include a tour of the falls. Uh, this is a two-hour guided tour of the falls. They take you down um, and, uh, and will show you, do a walking tour through the falls, talking about, showing you the different viewpoints and obviously talking about the history of the area as well as the rainforest. It will include cruises on the river. So last week we spoke about a couple of absolute musts that one has to do in Victoria Falls. One of them is obviously the tour of the falls and one of them is the Sundowner Cruise. Um, that is sort of a, a must-do that we include in any itinerary if, so, if people are even there for one night, not something I would recommend, but that would be the two things that you would include. So they include the Sundowner Cruise uh, in their rates. They do a morning and an afternoon river cruise. They include game drives in the Zambezi National Park. They include walking safaris. They do a morning and an afternoon walking safari. Um, and this, they will include lunch at the Lookout Cafe. So the Lookout Cafe is uh, owned by one of the, one of the partners um, and a great spot to just go and have lunch. So that is included in here as well. It includes all your meals, um, all your local brand beverages, including your um, fully stocked mini bar in the room. So this is a wonderful way to see, um, to see the falls, knowing that almost all of your activities are included. They have a concierge desk there as well. So for people wanting to book any other things that they decide last minute that they want to include, um, they can book all of those for you. And they include a shuttle service to and from the, from the Victoria Falls. So it's really a great place to be where you are situated right on the river, um, experiencing everything that the falls has to offer, but not necessarily in the middle of the town. The other property that I wanted to just showcase for you today is the Victoria Falls Safari Lodge. This is really an iconic hotel. It's won many, many, many awards over, its, uh, over the many years that it's been in existence. So Victoria Falls Safari Lodge uh, is, quite, is quite a big hotel. It has 70 rooms at the actual lodge. Um, but here the main feature of the Victoria Falls Safari Lodge is, is the fact that it overlooks this incredible waterhole. So it is on the outskirts of the Zambezi National Park and it's four kilometers away from Victoria Falls. They also offer a, a daily shuttle service that goes uh, on an hourly basis uh, to the Victoria Falls, to the town and back again. Um, so very easy to get to the falls from here. Um, and as I said, the main feature here is this most incredible, the sun sets literally behind um, that beautiful waterhole and it makes the most incredible, uh, you know, sundowner experience. It really is lovely. Uh, they have the Makua Kua restaurant, which is also a fantastic restaurant and many people from people staying all over Victoria Falls and many other of the different hotels make sure to come and have um, sundowners and dinner here at the Makua Kua restaurant in, in, uh, at Victoria Falls Safari Lodge. Victoria Falls Safari Lodge is also got situated on the same property. They have Victoria Falls Safari Club, which is their five-star option. This is really an amazing option. It has only 20 suites. It has its own fine dining restaurant, its own library, its own spa. And the, the great inclusions that they include here. So Victoria Falls Safari Lodge and Club can be booked either on a bed and breakfast basis, a dinner bed and breakfast basis, or a fully inclusive basis, including all of your meals and activities. Um, but some of the things that Victoria Falls Safari Club includes, which is really amazing, is um, they, they also do a, a stocked minibar, which they stock daily, but they do high tea, which they serve on the deck in the afternoons. They do uh, sundowners with canapes um, for an hour each evening, uh, which are complimentary. And also for an hour every day, they have um, complimentary uh, 
head and neck uh, massages or foot massages on the deck. Um, they also do uh, sort of educational um, talks uh, three or four times a week, really on the history of the area. They talk about David Livingston. They talk about various other subjects. So it's... Um, if you stay at Victoria Falls Safari Club, certainly you can be entertained all day. It's a, it's a really great option. Much quieter than Victoria Falls uh, Safari Lodge, just a, literally on the same property, so sort of next door, but just, uh, you know, on a slightly different level. Some of the other activities that they offer, at, uh, which are quite unique at Victoria Falls Safari Lodge, is here on the left hand side top left you'll see the what they call the vulture culture experience so every day at around one o'clock um, they uh, they feed um, the vultures and really this is about conservation um, and uh, an educational experience trying to teach people about uh, the ecology and the ecological significance of um, of uh, of the vultures um, that's a complimentary activity that they do every day. One of the other things that they have, top right hand corner here, is the hide. So it's called the Seduli hide. This is a five minute walk from the Victoria Falls Lodge, the lodge itself. And they normally offer, offer this activity mornings and evenings. So the morning activity would be at around quarter past six in the mornings, afternoons around quarter past four. Uh, it needs to be pre-booked. They take a maximum of six people down to the hide. And it's normally a two hour activity. So this is really fantastic opportunity to go down and just sit quietly at the edge of the water hole. The hide is built underground to resemble a termite mound. Um, so the whole idea, and I think we have discussed this over the past sort of couple of weeks um, in various other sessions, but for those of you who don't really know what a hide is, um, it's normally built in a, at a sort of slightly underground so you'll go down some steps into the hide and it's really built so that you are sitting at ground level eye to eye with the animals most of them are built around a water hole um, and just to sit there and have the total peace and, and tranquility um, of, of having the animals really walking up to you because they totally don't know that you're there and they come down, all the animals quietly come down to drink. The bird life is incredible and the photography um, that you can get from the hides is just simply incredible. They have a bird hide as well uh, at Victoria Falls Safari Lodge which is accessible to anybody throughout the day. Um, so you know, all of these just make it a, uh, these are all just added extras, which make it a really um, interesting option to stay there. Um, one of the other things that I haven't spoken about is the BOMA. The BOMA dinner experience is also situated at Victoria Falls Safari Club. It's open to the public and to anyone else staying anywhere else at Victoria Falls. This is really a cultural dinner experience. It showcases the different um, foods of Africa. Uh, specifically obviously, obviously of Zimbabwe and it's done as an outdoor barbecue. Uh, it's a three course meal, you come and uh, they have a variety of different starters, a variety of different meats. Um, they do cater for vegetarians but this is definitely uh, I would say a meat eaters heaven here. And obviously one of the things that they showcase is the different games. So you'll have as you can see here warthog steaks, um, you, you will have uh, earlunt meat, you, you will have uh, crocodile, um, crocodile meat as a starter, for example. It's uh, very much uh, game orientated. They also have traditional dinner and uh, traditional dancing. Um, and then one of the other activities, which is really loved by everybody, is they have the traditional drumming experience. Everybody is given drums in the whole room. Normally after dinner at around nine o'clock, all of the drums come out. And it's just fantastic experience, especially for the family, just watching everybody just really learning how to drum on the drums. And it's such an exciting um, experience for everybody. The kids get involved. Um, the adults get involved and everybody's basically drumming and eventually it lands up with everybody dancing inevitably around the fire, which is just such a lovely evening and highly recommend it. I always suggest that people try and do the, the BOMA experience. You can see it's great for kids. They do, they do face painting on the children. Um, 
and here we are uh, eating the Pani worms. So this is always a challenge that they come up with is to try and see who will eat the Mapani worms. They literally take the worms and they, they, they like deep fry them so that they're quite crispy and crackly. And um, it's always a challenge to see who's gonna eat the Mapani worms. So uh, that is a little bit about the, uh, about the BOMA experience. So as you can see at both of these properties, um, it's a really, it, they're both really close to the falls and both of them offer sort of the experience of being at the falls. You can do all of the activities at the falls, but both of them have the most incredible views over the, the bush felt as well. So from Victoria Falls, I'm gonna take you down to Wangi National Park. So just how are we gonna get there? You've got a couple of options here. You can do a road transfer from Victoria Falls to Wangi. So the road transfer to the edge of the park is about an hour, but then obviously depending on where you are within the national park is going to make another difference as to how long you're going to travel. I would say you need to cater for a good two to two to three hours um, to get to the lodge, of which at least an hour of that will be driving through the national park itself. So, and those normally are pickups done in open four by four vehicles. So really it's considered to be a game drive. The other option is to fly in. So a flight from Victoria Falls to Wangi is about a 45 minute flight into the airstrip. And from there, the lodges will pick you up. And again, you'll do a, an open vehicle game drive to the lodge. So as you can see, very easy combination, really no problem at all to get between uh, Victoria Falls and Wangi. And a lot of people um, do combinations with Victoria Falls, Wangi. And then in fact, uh, for those of you who we did Botswana, this, it's also very easy to cross over the border. And just over here, running off the map over here is Chobe National Park. So really also great to combine Chobe, Victoria Falls and Wangi into a bit of a a combination trip combining a couple of different countries as well. So heading into Wangi National Park, um, I'm going to first of all just show you a, a video on um, Somalisa Camp. Um, so let's just do that first and then I'll tell you a little bit more about these camps. <laughs> to Somalisa camp. Um, you can see this magnificent location of Somalisa situated right overlooking um, the waterfall. So Somalisa has got, is part of African bush camps and they've got three different camps. The one is the Somalisa main camp, uh, which, um, which was the video that I showed you. But just to let you know, they also have Somalisa Acacia camp, which is their family friendly camp, um, really specifically designed to also offer uh, educational experiences to children. And then they have Somalisa Expeditions Camp. Um, An Expeditions Camp, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about Expeditions Camp when we go into Mana Pools, in fact, but uh, I'll show you a picture of that just now. 
So Servalisa Main Camp um, is, uh, has got seven uh, safari tents. These tents are absolutely beautifully situated, all of them um, overlooking the vast plains in front of them. Huge, very, very spacious rooms, um, very traditional African safari lodge in design. And um, you can see each of these rooms has really, they've got fans, they've got wood burning stoves, um, they've got the most beautiful bathrooms, very romantic with these huge copper slipper baths, indoor showers, outdoor showers. The bathrooms are built to have a very indoor outdoor feel to them so that you can literally lie in the bath and look out over the plains watching the game um, pass by. Uh, very romantic feeling. Um, the, uh, the seven tents are beautifully spaciously uh, apart from each other, so you, you do have privacy. Um, and then here at the, uh, at the main lodge, they have um, the, a beautiful big pool deck. And one of the things, though, that Sir Melissa is well known for is what they call the elephant pool. You can see just at the end of this uh, pool deck here, they have um, a drinking hole. And quite frequently, you have the elephants. And in fact, very frequently, you have the elephants coming literally right up to the deck. And you will have seen so many times, and if you, if you go onto the internet and, and onto um, various people's you know, pages, you see so many photographs taken of of people in the pool with the elephants literally kind of right in front of them. This is the kind of um, place that you're going to be seeing these pictures. You can imagine you're going to be swimming literally here and, people, and, and the elephants are drinking like two meters away from you. It really is a truly incredible experience. As I mentioned, those of you who were on the call um, uh, uh, last week, uh, uh, Wangi is particularly known for its elephants. It has over 50,000 elephants in Wangi National Park. So uh, it really is elephant heaven. Um, it is also so Melissa. Uh, in fact, Julian, you mentioned um, you mentioned Cecil the lion. I think you were talking about Cecil the lion last week. That is um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So Cecil the lion was also uh, in oh, wow. his sort of, yeah, yeah, in Wangi, his main sort of territory was in fact just around Somalisa. And the Somalisa guides knew Cecil the Lion really, really well. And in fact, one of the Somalisa guides is sort of doing a, um, a lot of research on his, uh, his sort of, his, uh, his, the babies that he had, his cubs, right. and what's happened to his cubs. Um, and it's really, really interesting. So for those of you who don't do, know, Cecil the Lion was um, trophy hunted in 2015. Um, and there was a massive outcry about that. It went totally viral. And uh, it obviously led to a massive um, outcry on that, but also conservation, uh, a lot of conservation um, you know, a lot of interesting documentaries that came um, out of that in terms of uh, saving the lion populations around Africa, mm. conserving the lion, um, and obviously a lot about poaching and uh, and what's happening there. So that was that sort of all took place in this area around Somalisa, in fact. Right. Yeah. So uh, just in terms of, we did speak about this last week, but again, I'll just cover a little bit about the types of activities that you're going to get in Wangi. Um, so this is situated in a private concession within Wangi. You can do walking safaris here. Many, many, uh, most of the parks in, in Wangi offer walking safaris. It's, it's, it's a very popular activity in Zimbabwe. So walking safaris, um, you have to be over 16 to go on a walking safari. Young children aren't allowed. Uh, for obvious reasons, really, it's purely a safety um, aspect. You are, and, and some people forget this, you are in the wild. Uh, these animals are totally unpredictable. Even though the rangers are incredibly skilled, um, the rangers need to know that people are going to listen. So it's really just about knowing that, you know, when people will listen to them when they tell, whatever they tell you to do, you need to, you need to listen. Um, but it is a truly incredible and remarkable experience. And, and Julian, you and I were discussing it again. I think we spoke last week about it. I think what I absolutely love about walking safaris is you really hear um, so many stories. And, and it's really about the smaller things as opposed to when you're out on the game vehicles, it tends to be more in search of uh, 
for the big five, in search of the bigger game. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're on walking safaris, it's really about the sights and sounds of nature. It's about the insects and it's about the, the, the vegetation and it's about the smaller animals and it's about tracking, learning to track and, um, and, and you know, to identify dung. And it's, it's really a totally different experience and something that everybody should do. You know, I would really recommend that you do combinations of walking safaris and game drives because you will get something completely different out of both of them. Um, you know, it's not just to say, well, I've been on a game drive, why should I go on a walk? And also, and we did cover this last week as well, but certainly we do get asked this a lot, you know, do you need to be fit and how many kilometers do you walk? This is not about fitness at all. And it's certainly not about walking many, many kilometers. Mm -hmm. um, this is really, you know, you, you can really just be walking, not even necessarily far from the lodge. It's really just about total sort of integration into the bush. Um, really amazing experience. And Nikki, I think it's also worthy to note that uh, not everywhere or all the national parks you could actually do walking safari. So Zimbabwe is really a good place to do that, actually. Indeed, indeed, yeah. yeah. Um, in fact, you know, you need to do those. Normally, they're done in the private concessions as opposed to the the, the national the the game reserves. So, mm. here, I right, just in the bottom corner here, just wanted to. That was really I was just telling you about Acacia Camp. So, um, at all of the the African bush camps properties, they have one of the camps which is really designed for children. And when I say designed for children. Uh, maybe that's the wrong word. It is a, a traditional African bush camp, but they have family tents with interleading rooms. So they do accommodate children. Not all lodges will accommodate children. Um, when, they, when I say that they accommodate children, they accommodate them in the family tents, but also they do, from various different ages of children, they do, if the kids are really little, little and they're not allowed onto the game vehicles, they do what they call sort of a bush bumble with them, where they'll take them out onto a vehicle, but just in a safe environment where they're not getting too close to the big uh, game. Um, they will do, uh, they do a lot of educational um, sort of conservation ethics with the kids. And I think this is really teaching kids from a really young age how important conservation is and why it's important to them. So they try and teach this to them in a manner that is really understandable to them. You know, why they shouldn't throw plastic bottles into the bush and um, what's really important. So trying to teach them things that they can understand that they can carry forward in life uh, is really what they're trying to do. And obviously then they do things like baking pizzas with them and making cookies with them and beading and, um, you know, teaching them African songs. And it's, it's really, really such an educational and wonderful experience for children. Um, I spoke earlier about expeditions camp. I just wanted to, I'm going to really just briefly touch on this because I'm going to show you a video of an expeditions camp in Mana Pools. Um, but expeditions camp is, is really more about uh, uh, comfortable um, accommodation, but without the frills. So it's really about getting totally engrossed in the sights and sounds of nature. Um, Right, then the other property that I wanted to uh, touch on today is the Hyde. Uh, in fact, Julian did show you a video of the Hyde right at the beginning for those of you who came in early. Um, you will have seen that large A-frame uh, structure. Uh, this is quite a traditional, very well-known camp in, in Wangi National Park. It consists of 10 tents. It's a tented camp here, yeah, as you can see. Um, also with a, a beautiful deck, each of them overlooking the plains again. So uh, really, really beautiful property. In, uh, a lot of emphasis, um, you know, at all, as in all of these lodges, it always amazes me. And we've said this so many times over, but you think to yourself, well, how on earth can these properties, when they're situated right in the middle of the bush, um, you know, put together some really amazing cuisine? And they, they really do. They come up with the most, uh, they've got incredible chefs at a lot of these lodges. Two things that I wanted to mention about the hide um, that uh, I think are unique about the hide. Uh, the one is their, um, their sleep out uh, activity. So again, we've covered this when we were looking at sleep out decks in South Africa. Uh, we've covered this a little bit in Botswana, but just for those people who have sort of come in for the first time today, just to, to let, let you know what sort of a sleep out deck is. So some people call it a sleep out, um, sleep out deck. Some people call it a star bed. Um, basically what this is, is it's, it's a total 
sleep out experience in the bush. So what normally happens is they'll take you out on your game drive and then after the game drive, they'll drop you off at your sleep out experience. This is normally probably anything from two or three to five kilometers away from camp. You are left there out in the bush um, with a walkie talkie so that you can come back, uh, you know, you can radio camp if you're uncomfortable at any stage in the night. Uh, they will set up dinner for you um, and you literally sit out under the stars and you have your, your dinner. And then the whole idea here is really a total sleep out experience on your own in the bush. Um, really listening to the sounds of nature and that feeling of being totally alone under the stars is really um, an incredible, incredible experience. And I would highly recommend it to anybody who has that opportunity to do a sleep out experience. It just will take your whole experience of the bush to a totally new level. You know, when you hear the lions roaring at night, it's those of you who've, who've been into the bush will, will know the lions can be kilometers away, but let me tell you when those lions roar at night, it feels like they are right outside. Like they are, the, the sound carries kilometers and it is just the most incredible no sound actually. Um, and as the elephants walk past and you're hearing the tree branches cracking and you know that they are right there, it is truly um, something that I would say is a total bucket list thing for most people. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to mention, this is not the best picture of a hide, but I did, I was just talking earlier about what is a hide, and I think this just shows you, uh, for those of you who've never been into a photographic hide before, again, you, you sort of go down the steps or down underground, and then you can see it's just a very basic structure with seating, and then here are the um, sort of, to they're not windows because they're totally open, there's no glass or anything that you're looking through, but just you can see that you are at eye level, most of them have got bean bags and um, sort of uh, different things to put your cameras on, um, to steady your cameras, and you literally are face to face often with, uh, with the animals. It really, um, it's really uh, great from a photography point of view. All right, so what I just wanted to show you here is we've now gone from Victoria Falls to Wangi National Park. So let's look at how we're going to get from Wangi up to uh, Kariba, uh, or Matusa Donna, and then into Mana Pools. Um, definitely the quickest and easiest option here is on a private charter. These routings that you can see here that are dotted out for you are all operated on a what we call a seat and charter basis. So this definitely makes it a far more affordable option as opposed to hiring a private charter flight, especially obviously if there's just two of you. Um, you know, if there's a group of you, a private charter is absolutely fine. But if you're paying for a private charter just for two people, it can work out quite expensive. So there are safari operators that operate a, we call it a seat in plane charter. So in other words, you're just paying for the seat, just like you do on a commercial flight. But there are small planes. They normally uh, have sort of a, a, um, a six seater plane or a 10 seater plane, um, which they, which they uh, fly across. They literally take off most of the, from, from the small bush airstrips, uh, which is an amazing experience. We spoke about it when we were talking about um, uh, Botswana. It's literally a clearing in the bush and uh, the game vehicles actually drive around the um, the airstrip twice just to make sure that the airstrip is actually clear of game so that the planes can actually land and it really is wonderful. It's, it's you know, there's no airport there. Um, it's literally a gravel airstrip totally built into the bush. So as you come down to land, the pilots also circle. They circle just to make sure there's nothing around that might sort of run across the runway. And then they come into land. And it really is a game viewing experience on its own, in fact, just flying over the national parks. Um, uh, you see all the animals from the air. It's, it really is a, a beautiful experience. So to fly from Wangi, here we are, to fly from Wangi up to Matusa Donna, uh, airstrip, you're looking at about an hour and a half approximately by air. So quick, easy um, connection through there. It's definitely the better way by road. It's not even an option. It's going to take far too long and the roads aren't great. Um, and, and 
flying commercially, you would have to fly either to Bulawayo or Victoria Falls and then from there into Kariba. So this is definitely the best way to go. Um, from there, uh, while I've got this, this uh, picture up on the screen, it's a half an hour flight into Mauna Pools. And from both Mauna Pools and Kariba down to Harare is about an hour and a half as well. So totally manageable um, uh, to do it that way. So we're going to look at Kariba. We've just now, uh, we will have flown an hour and a half and now we've landed in um, Matusadana National Park. And the first property that I'm just going to chat to you about is Bumi Hills. Uh, Bumi Hills is um, situated up on a hilltop overlooking Lake Kariba. Um, so obviously the, the whole idea from here is these incredible views right out over the lake. Uh, it is, consists of 10 um, luxury, uh, luxury suites at Bumi Hills. Um, you can see here, you've got this, this sort of beautiful thick vegetation um, going down and then here the, the, the walkways. So this is the kind of view that you're gonna have from the deck at, um, at Bumi. And you can see how they really like to make your, your dining experience. They often, in most of these lodges, they take your dining experience to different places. So they'll try and do a dinner on the, on the, on the main sort of restaurant on the deck. They'll often do a dinner um, on your private deck outside of your room. And then here you can see one of the things that they'll do is they'll take dinner down to the waterfront for you, which is just such a wonderful experience, literally to be sitting on the edge of the water with the water lapping up um, and having a dinner experience right here on the shores of the lake. It really, um, it's just so beautiful watching that sun go down and um, sitting around the fire and, um, and having your dinner there. Beautiful luxury rooms um, here, as I mentioned, 10 rooms and then they have two uh, sort of private two bedroom villas for families. Those two private two bedroom villas um, have their own private chef, private vehicle um, and a butler service. They have a gorgeous room flow swimming pool where one can sit here um, during the day. And Kariba for me is very much a great relaxation stop in between. So it's really great to do it in between Wangi and Mana Pools just to have those two or three nights where you can truly relax. So Bumi has got a spa, it's got a gym, and uh, the activities here again include your a lot of boating activities. So for people who are keen on fishing, you can certainly go try and catch your tiger fish here. You can do fishing activities. Um, you do your game drives and a lot of walking safaris in this area as well, just walking along the along the lake shore. Then I just want to tell you about Changa Safari Camp, um, just to give you another option here. So as opposed to Bumi, which is built right up on the hilltops um, overlooking uh, the lake, Changa is built right alongside the lake. This is, um, again, a tented camp, uh, and it's built right um, in the forest on the edges of the lake. It's really built to sort of totally flow into its natural surroundings so that if you were looking at Changa from, um, from the lake, you would barely see the property at all. Low impact, uh, beautiful sort of eco-friendly little, um, little camp. It's got uh, seven tents um, here. Each of these tents has got a beautiful little deck with a hammock. So again, here, the whole idea is total relaxation. Things are done in your own time. There's no pressure. You can really just relax and enjoy. Uh, you also saw, um, Julian showed you two videos right at the beginning of um, those of you who came in early, right at the beginning. Uh, and uh, you would have seen two videos of the houseboats on Kariba. This is another really great option for people just wanting to sort of get out onto the water. And as you could see, those houseboats sort of range from real real luxury houseboats, um, you know, to obviously sort of more, more basic. But here the experience is truly really just being out on the water. And you would, all of those houseboats come with tender boats. You would get into your tender boats and that is where you go and do your game viewing or your fishing or your birding um, along, the, along the lake shores. So that's how those, uh, those boats work. You ch also, I did mention this last week, but you charter the whole boat. You can't just charter a room in the boat. 
So, and those boats vary in size from small sort of boats that have maybe three cabins right up to sort of really large ones that sleep maybe 30, 40 people. So, um, so really great for a small family or, um, you know, or a small group of friends traveling together. All right, so we're going to move on to mana pools. Um, earlier, I spoke about uh, the expeditions camp, and I just thought I'd just throw that in because it's not something for everybody, but it definitely has a massive appeal to a lot of people. So I'm going to show you the video first, and then we'll talk a little bit more about um, about Sermales Lisa. So about camp in and just explain to you a little bit about the difference and I just wanted to show you that video because I think hopefully you saw the insides of the tents and got a, a bit of a feel for what the expedition camps are, are like. So expedition camps are much smaller. Normally there are three tents set up and this is really for people wanting a total sort of immersion into the bush. Um, here you really are feeling the sights and sounds of the bush, you know, to go to sleep at night and feeling, you know, listening to the river flowing, it's built right on the side of the river, listening to the river, listening to the, you know, the game coming down, the, the roars of the lions, and wake up in the morning just to that incredible sunset, it's a sunrise, it, it really is beautiful. Just to show you here the insides of the tents, you can see they really, they are comfortable, but they don't have all the sort of frills and fancies of the main lodges. A lot of people really love this experience and you're finding more and more people coming back to that sort of very authentic um, camping style. But this is not camping in the sense of, you know, on your hands and knees and really uncomfortable camping. This is really, I would say, luxury camping. Um, you can see, I mean, the beds are totally, you know, you've got beautiful white fluffy duvets, um, you get incredible meals, but it's really sort of your camping, authentic camping in the bush belt. Uh, each of these tents has got its own private bathroom, they are uh, en suite, and you can see here, these are fitted with bucket showers. So how the bucket showers work, for those of you who don't know, is um, they boil the, they, at certain times of the day, they'll boil, whenever you ask them to, they'll boil up water for you. They fill this up here, they, where's my mouse? Yeah, they fill this up with boiling water. So you have beautiful hot running showers, but obviously it's not a flick of the switch and it's not available right throughout the day. They need to fill up these, uh, these um, buckets with boiling water or with hot water for you before, uh, before you're ready to shower. Uh, flush toilets, you can see here, amazing views, and you really just get this, this feeling of almost going back to your camp, your camping again. Again, here, that types of activities, we did touch on this last week, so I'm not going to cover it too in depth, but 
lots of, because of the fact that you're right here on the Zambezi River, um, the activities are really revolved around a lot of water activities. So canoeing um, is, a, is a fabulous activity to do. And here you go out and you spend a couple of hours canoeing. It is incredible. And I showed you last week um, how close you get to the elephant and to the, to the hippos. Um, and it, it's just beautiful. It's just so incredibly peaceful. And obviously you have guides with you all the time. So, and I can't express this enough, how safety... Just, just to again reiterate, safety is a major thing. And obviously everything that I talk about at all times, you need to realize that you have highly, highly qualified guides with you at all times. And safety is their number one um, thing that they are interested in. So, you know, we, we don't just lose people in the river and we don't just lose people because they've been chomped by a lion. Okay, it just doesn't happen. These, these guides are... Um, they know the bush so incredibly well and they know exactly how to react um, to any situation that comes their way. Walking safaris is a huge um, activity in monopoles and, and obviously, um, and in fact, like we mentioned in Zimbabwe, but uh, a lot of walking safaris and of course game drives. And of course I did mention fishing. Tiger fishing is very, very popular in this area. Um, the great fighting fish of the Zambezi and for those uh, fishermen amongst you, I know that is really a bucket list item for a lot of, um, of fishermen. Right, so that was uh, one of the camps right on the, Zam on the Zambezi River of Mauna Pools. Uh, just to mention that African Bush Camps also does, they don't only have expeditions camp, they also have a beautiful um, five-star lodge as well. Um, and uh, now I just want to show you, this is my last video that I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you a video on um, Kanga. So this is one of uh, also African Bush Camp's properties. Um, and I'm going to let the video speak for itself. And then I'll tell you a little bit uh, more about the uniqueness of this camp. Kanga itself was very, very, very wild. It had been actively poached and no one seemed to be doing anything about it. Back stepped in and realized the benefit the camp would have had in the area, the wildlife and the people. It's through our tourism activities and practices that would earn us the capacity to be able to manage our wildlife and have an outpouring of benefits to our local people. By coming to Zimbabwe, you're already adding to conservation. Your visiting helps us know the importance of our wildlife. African bush camps have taken an initiative to, to start addressing the root causes of human-wildlife conflict. and the animals would walk long distances to go and look for water. It's an absolute heaven for Zimbabwe's wildlife, bringing them right to your doorstep. I love the pan. The Amchi Safari is really something that took me by surprise. I didn't know it existed. You sit by the deck and everything happens in front of you encounters with the elephants, uh, safe encounters with all sorts of animals. It's magic. You will never see that anywhere else in Africa. That makes Manapu so unique and special. We are not selling just game drive. We are selling the experience right from checking in until checkout. It's about the people every step of the way. When you come to Africa, we want to connect them with the vibe of nature. We don't separate ourselves from a conservation company. We believe that in order to conserve these beautiful parts of the world, you need to do tourism in a very sustainable way. That's what African bush camps is all about. Okay. So um, I love that video actually, because I think it also speaks a lot about the conservation ethic of African bush camps. 
um, and about the community involvement, um, which is which is really great. So, um, Kanga Camp uh, is is quite a unique camp in the sense that a lot of the other camps in the Manipal's area are situated right up sort of against the Zambezi River. Kanga Camp is um, further away from the Zambezi, but as mentioned in that video. Uh, Kanga Camp was formed around um, this incredible waterhole and this camp is really known for what they call an armchair safari. So it comprises of uh, seven tents um, set up all around this watering hole and literally it's only open during the dry season so it's open between April and November and the game just floods into that waterhole and really comes to you. You can spend the entire day just sitting on this deck and watching all the animals coming in to drink. There's nowhere, uh, there's no other source of water during the dry season for them at all, besides obviously walking all the way through the park to, uh, to the Zambezi River. Um, so you can imagine that literally at any time of the day, and obviously at night you have all the predators coming down to the water to drink. So the restaurant, you know, at night you literally sit and you have dinner, um, on the deck and you, you you just watch the predators coming in to drink. You watch all the animals coming in to drink during the day as well. It is, it really is, this is armchair safari, they call it. This is really sit and just wait and the animals come to you. Uh, they also have an incredible hide here. Um, and uh, the tents are really beautifully comfortable, beautiful, beautiful tents. Um, so getting here, it's a great combination, actually, if, um, if people have got the time to do, for example, two nights at Monopoles on the Zambezi and then two nights at Kanga Camp. It's really a totally different experience. Um, the one is offering more of your canoeing and your water sports, your, not water sports, your canoeing, uh, walking, etc. And here you can really just sit back and relax while the animals come into you. So again, one would fly down, you'd fly straight into Kanga Camp. Um, from Kariba, so you would, if, you, if you're combining it with Victoria Falls or Wangi, or you're coming straight in from Harare, you would fly straight into, into Kanga on a small little charter plane. Um, and uh, a great way to end off your safari, really just relaxing um, and, and having the most incredible video footage of these animals. You, this is just such a real picture of how Kanga, uh, of what happens at Kanga. You, you can literally be sitting at this table all day long and watching everything just walking by. The action is incredible. So that is me for today. Um, I think we've, I hope we haven't gone over time. No, perfect. I <laughs> we still so, have a bit of time for questions. <laughs> perfect. So okay. yeah, I think just to finish off, that is a really great itinerary for people wanting to experience a little bit of everything that Zimbabwe has to offer in a sort of nine to 12 day trip, depending on your time. I always say mm. perfect itinerary, three nights in each place. Yeah. Um, that's really the ideal, uh, just to give you time to just relax and really absorb it rather than sort of just passing through. Mm. But uh, certainly some of these places can be done in two nights for people who uh, have time restraints. Yeah, I think so the, yeah, the, the thing is that Zimbabwe has, uh, sp has sprung quite a bit of surprise, you know, for a lot of our friends here today. You know, and uh, they were looking at uh, Zimbabwe. Yeah, this is like wow Africa, you know, and yeah. uh, you, you get a lot of uh, the wildlife and uh, the, the photo opportunities that you can see over here. You know, and then uh, it's, it's really uh, uh, very good for, for wildlife photography. But obviously, I think that the, the, the issue is that it may be a little bit harder to, to get to Zimbabwe. You know, like uh, what Ian has uh, mentioned here in the chat, he said that there are actually no direct flights uh, into Zimbabwe from Singapore, for example. You know, uh, and then I think the normal route will be to fly via South Africa and then you it would be a pity if you don't spend some time in South Africa. But that would also mean that, you know, you you will spend time in South Africa and in Zimbabwe and you'll be spending quite a bit of time unless you have like an extended holiday. Um, so I think that was a question from Ian, but I, I also like to say that uh, from Singapore, you can actually also fly to uh, Addis Ababa via Ethiopian Airlines. And then uh, from there, you can get on to uh, Vic Falls, okay? Um, yeah, uh, straight into Vic Falls, and then you can start your safari too from there. So that is the other option that uh, you have. I, 
I also heard, uh, I read an article today, in fact, mm. saying that Emirates, I think, are going to start flying into Harare. Yeah, that is correct. So yes. mm. That is another, that could certainly be um, another interesting option. Obviously, right now, um, we're kind of all a little bit waiting to see, um, you know, what's going to be happening with the airlines. I do think there's going to be a shifting in routings happening. Right. Um, I do think some routings are going to stop and I think airlines are going to start flying new routings. So it's going to be interesting to see what routings pop up over the next while. Yes. Yeah. So we shall just stay tuned to that. Okay. Yeah. Do we have uh, any other questions from our friends here today? Yeah. While you, while you folks get the question ready, uh, I have two here for you, uh, Nikki. So one of it is uh, for our photography friends, uh, just to check if the heights, the photographic heights, are actually open 24 hours a day? Um, uh, some of them are. So mm. the, the, most of them, you know, if they are close by to the lodge, you can go down um, to those hides. If right. they are, obviously, if they're hides that, further, that are further away, in other words, you need a ranger to take you down there, then, um, you know, not 24 hours a day, but mm. certainly, um, you know, the, 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 the ranges are absolutely amazing. And a lot of them will, will, uh, you know, they, they'll see and hear what's going on long before you will even hear or see what's going on. So if they hear, or they think that there's, um, lions going down or anything going down to the hide, you know, they will certainly take you down there straight away. Right. Yeah. But then, like I said, at some of these lodges, uh, at some of the lodges, you know, the hides are right there. So yes, absolutely. Mm, yeah. So if uh, you guys would like to find out which are the lodges, please contact oh. us. Yeah, and oh. we will be able to advise uh, which are the ones that you can go to. You know, because yeah, yeah you're right. Uh, the some of the some of the water holes are a little bit further away, and then yeah. uh, the rangers might be able to take you there. But you know, sometimes we find it like uh, it's it's quite it's like trouble troubling them, you know, especially during the night, you know, and if you just want to stay there for the night, then the rangers also have the duty to stay there with you if uh, yeah. the height is uh, quite a distance well, away. You yeah. know, you can see, I mean, from Kanga Camp, I mean, really, hmm. you can just sit on that, uh, on that deck right yes. throughout the night if you wanted to. There's just so much action coming down to that, um, to that waterfall all, all the time, actually. Right. Mm, which makes yeah. it really incredible. Yes. So uh, do find out a bit more on your preference, uh, especially for photography, and then we'll be able to advise that accordingly. Yeah, so I think the other question is that uh, if they don't fly fly to the various destination, okay, uh, obviously you can take the vehicle, right? Uh, but uh, you are saying that uh, the roads are not really that, that great in uh, Zimbabwe. I can understand that because uh, these are basically the gravel roads and then you could be driving like 40 or 50 kilometers for most way and you will be like uh, having a massage throughout the entire journey, you know. <laughs> yeah, so Sorry. that's the that's the easy way to put it. Yeah, and it could be quite long to, to do it. So right? I, think, um, I think it depends where in Zimbabwe. So for right. example, to drive from Victoria Falls to Wangi, no problem at all. It's that really not a problem. Okay. Mm. Um, to drive from Harare up to Kariba, also no problem. Okay. But to drive, for example, from Wangi mm. to um, to drive from Wangi, and in fact, maybe I should let me just quickly go back to this first map, and then right. I can here. Okay, to to drive here from Vic, from Victoria Falls to Wangi, that's no problem. Also, the route. Oh, sorry, the route from Harare up to Kariba is mm. is a is a well established road. Yeah, you can see this is a is a really really good road. Yes. Um. However, as you can see, if you wanted to go, sorry, if you want to go from Wangi mm. to Kariba, okay, you would have to come down to Bulawayo and then go across to Harare and then go up to Kariba. Now, right. from a time perspective those roads these red roads on this route are, are well established roads and not a problem those are tar roads but to try to go some people look at this map and they say well you know what i'm going to drive from victoria falls along here to kariba mm. mm. definitely not recommended okay th th <laughs> these are really bad roads right. it's going to take you forever to get there so yeah. it's just this section here, you can see it's just not a viable option to go from Wangi all the way around like this. It's just going to take you too long. Mm. And um, uh, Nikki, how about if uh, a boat option, that means along the Zambezi River, 
and then you take okay. a, a boat, you know, and you head straight up. Yeah, would that be yeah. an option? Yes. So that is. So I, I I think I mentioned last week that in fact there's so there's there's two ideas here. First right. of all, there's a ferry. Mm. It is a car ferry. So, and it, it travels all the way along here. So this is really more for self-drive people who mm. wanting to take their vehicles. You can go on this. This is an overnight ferry. It's 22 hours to get from Binga, from, from Milibizi, which is here, Milibizi to Kariba. Um, what you can also do is take a, you know, a, a boat charter. Um, but I still think, you know, a lot of them operate sort of either in this area or they operate in that area. Right. So I would still say the better option, for example, if you were wanting to combine Victoria Falls and Kariba would be to fly to Kariba and then get your boat charter from there. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So we, we have also a questions from Brenda. Brenda is asking, uh, is chloroquine uh, readily available? So I think that's the ma malaria pills. Malaria, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, it's definitely, Zimbabwe is a malaria area and I would definitely recommend taking uh, malaria prophylactics. Um, at least, you know, consulting with your, with your doctor or with your right. local um, clinics to, just to check what they recommend. Hmm. Okay. So just to try and check with the travel cleaning. And it's not, uh, you, you don't need a yellow fever vaccination, no. right? No, hmm. you don't. Okay. No, you don't. Yes. All right. So yeah, we, we can see that um, the the opportunities are plenty, but then uh, probably because the, the fact is that they don't have a very good uh, infrastructure, especially for roads, you know, compared to South Africa. Yeah. So this would be uh, a good place to go to spend maybe uh, like what you suggest suggested, you know, nine to 12 days. I think that will be wonderful. And then you just cover that part of... Uh, of uh, Zimbabwe along the Zambezi River. I think uh, that's where all the opportunity that you can get uh, yeah. quite a bit from there. Yeah. We, yeah, we also have friends who are actually interested to get into Gondara Zoo, for example, but I think that would be, there'll be another route, uh, which we probably have to do also South Africa and Gondara Zoo at the same time. <laughs> so, so Gondara Zoo, um, so, so last year, I think it was last, uh, right. last year, um, we, I, in fact, I had a group of photographers from Germany okay. and uh, they flew into Harare. Then they chartered a flight down to Gonorrhea Zoo right. and they spent uh, three nights in Gonorrhea Zoo. Um, and uh, then they went across to Matopas National Park. Right. Um, and from there, they went across to Wangi and Victoria Falls. Okay. So maybe also just to be clear that this route that i've just shown you is certainly not the only route that one can do in in mm. um zimbabwe gone Rizu is truly a, a, an incredible wilderness area and a, and a really spectacular national park um but as you can see it's quite far from the rest of you know the rest of this area mm. but certainly you know what they did was they did gone Rizu, and then uh, they, they did a charter flight um, to and fr uh, from Harare into Gonorrhea Zoo and from Gonorrhea Zoo into Bulawayo. Right. And then they did a road transfer to Matopas mm -hmm. and then a road transfer to Wangi and then a road transfer to Victoria Falls. So that is totally possible to do. And in fact, it was a magnificent trip that they did. Thank you, Nikki. I think that's another route for consideration. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We we just have also a question from Ian. Ian is uh, asking for uh, whether the South Africa international borders are open from first of October. Is that true? It is true. I'm I'm thrilled to say that it is true. Um, However, we are still waiting um, on a list from the government. There are obviously certain um, they, they are, we're waiting for the list from the government of which countries uh, have cert, certain countries are going to have certain requirements right. and certain countries. And it's really mainly looking at high risk countries. So uh, countries where they have uh, large COVID numbers are obviously going to have certain requirements to come into the country. Mm -hmm. At this point in time, um, the, the one requirement that we do know is, um, is, is going to be that you have a COVID clear test 72 hours before you enter the country. Okay. Um, and that we do know is, is a definite ruling. And then uh, we are waiting, all of us, sitting waiting in anticipation of this list of countries 
that are going to be basically exempt from entry into um, into South Africa. Uh, oh. And as soon as I know, I'll let you know. But um, yeah, but I'm very excited about that. And uh, we are all so thrilled to eventually be able to um, welcome guests back into the country. Certainly South Africa has spent a lot of time, as is the rest of uh, the Southern African countries, on uh, putting COVID policies and safety procedures into place. Mm. So I really do think that we are, we're ready. We're ready to welcome people back now. Yeah, I'm sure all our friends are all looking forward to the day where we can all travel again, you know. I know, yeah. I know. Mm. Okay, yeah, great. So I think, oh, we have uh, overran the time a little bit today. So I would just like to check if uh, there's any more questions from our friends here today. Okay, any more questions that uh, you'd like to find out, especially about Zimbabwe? Okay. We'll just give another, another 30 seconds for this before we close off this session. Yeah. Thank you once again, Nikki. You know, uh, this one hour yeah. thing has been so productive and uh, there's so much information that you share. Uh, you know, your friends, uh, you couldn't actually just imagine how much preparation work that Nikki has to put it in, you know, to get all the facts right and to put this into a, to a wonderful presentation. So thank you once again, Nikki. And uh, doing this like, like every week is kind of like <laughs> almost before you know it, the next week is up again. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. So um, thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks for your time again today. And uh, we just like to wish you a very good week ahead. And don't forget to join us next week uh, for the wonderful introduction to Namibia. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Namibia, we are going to spend a number of weeks there because the place is simply too huge. But do come by and uh, find out why Namibia is such a wonderful destination. Okay. So thank you, everyone. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.